Why does my brain hate me? Everyone's brain hates it when they lose weight. Calories have never been cheaper. People have calculated that you can get about a thousand calories for 90p. More people are dying from overnutrition than undernutrition. It is definitely an emergency. Does our brain like us losing weight? I, I did the keto diet recently mm -hmm. for about two months. And why did you do it and why did you come off? I did it because I wanted to. Okay, this is interesting. It shows how much of a Neanderthal I am. Um, <laughs> I I thought I was allergic to gluten. Okay. So I thought I'll cut out all of the things that have gluten in them and I'll try that. And so I then watched this video online and it talked about the keto diet. So I thought, oh, that sounds good. And I, this guy had lost so much weight doing it. So I gave it a try. Now I lost so much weight, more weight than I've ever lost in my life. Like I, extreme. Um, I did it for about eight weeks. I lost about a stone in weight. The reason I came off it was because it was hard. It was hard. <laughs> in, in, a, in a simple word, it was difficult. And uh, I don't know, I felt like I was fighting against something. How long ago did you come off it? And the, the mm. crucial information, piece of information I'm, I'm interested in is, have you gained any weight back? Um, 45 days ago, none of your business. I'm joking. <laughs> 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 no, um, I gained so much weight back. I gained, I didn't just gain the stone I'd lost. I think I gained a little bit more back. I think I gained a stone and a bit back. Uh, I mean, I'm not in bad shape, but like for me, I went from being absolutely lean, like I'm ready for men's health to being like, back to being like, you know, like um, I'd say athletic now, but I gained back the weight I'd lost and more. So this is why I asked the question about the brain. My brain didn't seem to be on board with me. It didn't seem to want the best for us. And it seemed to want to return me back to my default base state. Your brain, everyone's brain, hates it when they lose weight. It doesn't matter your starting point. You could start from a point where you are athletic versus someone who's not athletic, couch potato type, 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 phenotype. The moment you lose a little bit of weight, we're talking even a few pounds. I'm not even talking, you're talking about a stone. Even if you lost five pounds, what happens in your brain is your brain is used to you carrying a, you or me carrying a certain amount of weight. The moment your weight starts to go down as an adult, it goes, hey, oh, you know, this is a big flag comes up. This reduce, this is reducing my chance of survival. This is what the brain thinks. And so what it does is it begins to use strategies, not conscious, nothing to do with our brain, anything like that to drag us back up, kicking and screaming to where we were before. First of all, it makes us hungry, okay? So, so, so it, makes us, it makes us hungry. And second, it actually very, very secretively lowers your metabolism ever so slightly so that even without think, even eating exactly the same thing, you are now storing more than you're burning, even eating exactly the same thing. Part of the strategy to get you back up to where you were before. So once you were on that keto diet, and we can debate where, uh, how it, talk about how it works and whether it's useful. But once it's on the you're on the diet, your weight goes off, you're able to keep it, but you say, man, I can't do this. And so you stop. And the moment you stop, your brain goes, comes back on and starts dragging you back up. This is gonna be true for pretty much every single diet that is, that is out there. The moment you stop the diet, the weight will come back on eventually. Why does my brain hate me? <laughs> <laughs> it's what, look, this is the brain. You have to remember um, that that's what's kept us alive. I mean, get, we have lived, aside from probably the last 40 years, we probably most of the time never had a, in, enough food. Now, clearly, over the past 100 years, we've had sufficient food compared to bit, bit, bit beyond that. But you know, as well as I do, when you turn on the TV and watch Only Fools and Horses from the, from, from, from the 70s or whatever, you know, people are all skinny. They think, oh, no, they don't look skinny. They don't look skinny. They, are look, they look normal weight for the time that they're, that they're there. Whereas we have clearly, over the past 40 years, now have too much food. So this is now a different problem, okay, that we have too much food. And so our brain is trying to respond to, to this environment, but it's responding in a natural fashion. Because what used to happen was because there was not enough food, when there's food there, you made sure you ate it. Otherwise, why would you, why would you not do that, right? So we have a brain that's wired for a feast-famine environment. Feast, famine, feast, famine. The problem is we live in a feast, feast environment at the moment. 
And that's the issue. We have a maladapted brain for a feast, feast environment. And this is because of how we've set up society, because of supermarkets, fridges, preservatives that keep food lasting for longer and foods more available and cheaper than before it's more processed, et cetera, right? So, so this is true. Now, now, without going all food Nazi, I mean, you have to remember that the all of whatever you just said, preservatives, you know, pickling, cooking, you start with that. Then you say, oh, we're going to do highly processed foods. We're going to do prepackaged foods, frozen foods, microwave foods, et cetera, et cetera, supermarkets. It has kept us alive. Okay, we're seven and a half billion people and counting. We need to feed all these people. And this is fine. The problem is we've now got to the point where the efficiencies, the scales of efficiency in our food production is now so high, we can now get calories have never been cheaper. So this is this is the um the 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 the, the issue today. You can on uh, um in this country, for example, in the UK, people have calculated that you can get about a thousand calories for 90p. Now, how good are those calories? What the quality of the food of those calories? We're not talking, we're just talking pure calories. Because of efficiencies of scale, calories have never been cheaper. And we don't have to go run after an antelope in order to get in order to get the calories. This has kept us alive until it is killing us, which is now over the past 10 years that have been an important inflection point in, in human history. You know, previously we never had enough food. Whereas now, since the past 10 years, more people are dying from overnutrition than undernutrition. And overnutrition in a bad way. Because you can be uh, you can have loads of calories but still be malnourished because you're eating the wrong kind of foods. And can you believe it? We are now in a world where there are more people dying because they eat too much than because they because they don't eat enough. Is the worldwide trend that we are getting skinnier or fatter? We are getting fatter as a, as a worldwide trend. And 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 true that the the problems are more obvious at the moment in higher income countries. Okay, because because a they're, they're studied more and b the kind of food that's available. But you are good. But what is the goal of of um, of a country that is less developed that, than us, for example? They want to pull their people out of poverty. They want to make sure that their poor people don't die of starvation. They want to make sure that fast food and 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 good food, you know, and crap food are available to everybody uh, there as well. Now the problem is the moment that happens, you don't switch from being dying of undernutrition and, and starvation to then now dying of overnutrition. So we are at that inflection point where the whole world very soon will get into a severe obesity problem. And, and we do need to fix the food environment in order to fix that. Do you consider it to be an emergency? It is definitely an emergency. Oh, it is definitely an emergency. And it's an emergency because, because let's ask the question, why is it a problem to have obesity? Why is it a problem to carry too much fat? Okay, so so that is a, so you might think well it's obvious. Well, is it? Because the 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 there are issues with gravity when you're too heavy, um, arthritis, mobility, sleep apnea, you can't breathe at night. But that is that isn't what kills us. Okay, if, if we're, what kills us is all the diseases that are associated with obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, certain cancers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That is what kills us. Okay, heart disease. And, and so it is an emergency because with obesity at a population level as it goes up, then you have millions upon millions of people um, that, uh, that end up, you, you know, with diseases. So the, the estimate is that direct cost to the NHS, direct cost for treating obesity and related illness is six to seven billion a year, okay, pounds. That's the direct but the moment you take into account uh, the broader economy, days sick, um, et cetera, et cetera, it's estimated we are running at 27 billion a year just on economic effects on, on, on obesity. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests. Uh -huh.